That's correct. In this video, I will be ranking every level in Banjo-Kazooie and Banjo-Tooie using this uh, awesome tier list made by uh, Casey Toad. Also, you'll see Spire Mountain has its own level, but there is no Spire Mountain option. That is because Spire Mountain ascends beyond uh, the list and also the list only comprises actual levels, not any of the hubs, though I will add the hubs at the end. And of course, Spire Mountain is its own tier. It's not much of a level. It's really short. There's almost nothing to do in it, but it holds a special place in my heart as it probably does for a lot of people. So we're gonna start with, I think the first one everyone's familiar with, Mumbo's Mountain. Mumbo's Mountain, you know, it's not bad. It's surprisingly short. Uh, introduces Mumbo, introduces transformations. It's not bad, but it's not amazing. It's not awful. I think it's a solid B tier level. Like the music in basically every level slaps hard. It slaps like Donkey Kong. But when it comes to the level being fun to go back to, its replayability, it's just sort of there. <laughs> in comparison, which this might actually be a bit of a hot take, Mayhem Temple. It's the first level, but for Banjo Tooie. And I think it actually has more going for it, honestly. It's helped that it's bigger. It's helped that it has more unique characters. It's a bit more interesting of a layout and yeah honestly i think it's just a better mumbo's mountain the temple also introduces first person shooting which is weird in a banjo kazooie game i get that but it was fun next up let's pick a random one rusty bucket bay <laughs> so <laughs> i want to be clear here Spire mountain obviously is a tier of its own f isn't to say that it's the worst level is just not my favorite and honestly rusty bucket bay looking through these i think it's an f tier that's probably not much of a hot take people either hate this level or love it it's extremely challenging especially when you're playing on the n64 version where they didn't save the notes when you died which i, I believe was a hardware limitation that's why it was changed with the uh, rare replay versions it's much less frustrating the engine room haunts my memories as it probably does for a lot of fans so uh, I don't ever want to replay it whenever I'm replaying Banjo-Kazooie. I think, oh god, I have to go to this level. It's not something I look forward to. So, that's Rusty Bucket Bay. Uh, comparison, Clanker's Cavern, it's another gross, dingy level, but I think it's way more fun. Uh, Clanker is a tragic character. Seeing him have to wallow in filth before we raise him up to the surface. I think it's a pretty good level, but the only thing is, when it comes to actually playing it, it has a lot of water. I've never felt like water was the most interesting part of a Banjo-Kazooie game. I think it's C tier. It's just sort of like, a, it's an okay level. It, it feels middle of the road, so it's C. I know we're starting with a lot of Banjo-Kazooie stuff, but uh, speaking of C, Click Clock Wood. This one is, it is rough. It is difficult. <laughs> I, I do think it's better than Clanker's. I don't know if I would say it's an A. It's no Spiral Mountain, that's for sure. Click Clock Wood is extremely difficult. It feels massive, even though it's actually not that big, but having to go between the various seasons is a cool gimmick, but in casual play, it could feel very frustrating, especially like, oh, you miss a single grub giving to Eagly, then you have to go back and feed him before you can grow to be big. So I think it's a B tier. I, I, I really like I really like the theme, especially. Uh, I love the level design. I think it's very interesting. We get to see Mumbo uh, sweeping out his hut in, is it summer? Or f no, fall, because he's sweeping out the leaves. Uh, and we get to see him chilling in summer. And when it's chilly, I believe he just leaves. It's, it's fun. It has the B, which I think is one of the most iconic transformations in the whole series, but it's rough to play. Like it's a rough level. Onwards, let's go a two level because we've been doing a lot of Kazooie levels. Jolly Rogers of Lagoon. A lot of water. There is a lot of water, but I think it's better than Clankers. Is it a B tier? I don't know. I really like the theme. Uh, I think it has interesting characters, cool boss fight, a fun mini game with the submarines. It's, it's not the best, but it's decent. Going into the giant fish was pretty interesting. Probably C, but definitely better than Clankers for sure. It's just, again, the water, it feels a little redundant. I, I, the point of water is to slow you down and to give you the risk of drowning. And here, you oxygenize the water, which means you never have to go up for air. So you just have a level where you don't do much platforming, you're swimming around, you're using the pretty annoying underwater aiming grenade eggs and ice eggs for those stupid octopus arms that block the paths. It's a C tier. It's not bad. It's not, I don't think it's bad enough for D, but I think it's a little better than Clankers, mainly for all the characters. Also, shout out to Tip Top. 
though he does appear in Bubble Goop. Speaking of Bubble Goop, I don't look fondly on this level. It's not awful. I don't think it has a lot going for it. I, I, I think it's just a swamp. Uh, it's not a bad swamp, but it's a swamp. Grand Energies. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. This is an F tier. I'm just gonna throw it out there. <laughs> Maybe it's seeing Banjo Kazoo. I, I, I think it's better than Rusty Bucket Bay, which is not saying a lot, but it's still an F tier. Again, F tier doesn't mean it's a bad level. It's just something that I don't enjoy. It's not something I want to go back to. It might be memorable, but memorable isn't always good. <laughs> I always remember it as being uncomfortable and frustrating and a little scary. Uh, it's, it's difficult. There, there's like, I was realizing. I don't know if I've ever actually 100%ed Banjo-Tooie, which is crazy considering I'm such a huge fan. And part of the reason is because of all the goddamn stuff in Granny Industries. I just I don't like the level. Onwards, we have Witchy World, a world that also I have memories of uh, being a little scared, <laughs> it being difficult, but it's better. I think it's better than Bubble Goop. I think it honestly might be more iconic than Jolly Rogers and Clankers, which makes it maybe a B, but maybe it's just the top of C. I'm gonna put it at B for now, and we'll readjust later. But Witchy World is extremely memorable for all of its various areas, Western, space, other zones. Also the idea that <laughs> Grunty, uh, while uh, going through the world with her drill, she just also happens to be inside of the uh, fortune teller tents. A little weird, but uh, whatever, you do you. Obviously, Mr. Patches is, I think, one of the most iconic boss fights in the game series, which makes sense as to why they just straight up reused them twice in uh, Nuts and Bolts. But either way, Witchy World, I think is a low B tier, maybe top of C. That's where we're putting it right now. Next up, we have Cloud Cuckoo Land. The final level of Banjo Tui. It is also very difficult, much like um, Clear Clock Woods. I think it's frustrating more than it is difficult. Uh, it's definitely worse than Clankers, I think. Top of D, yeah. I, I, I think it has a more interesting setting than Bubble Goop. The characters are memorable, obviously, in, in the picture. Uh, Canary Mary's race is notorious. I remember pushing George Ice Cube down to his doom just to cool some water. Good times. It's a silly level, but I think silliness is part of Banjo-Kazooie's appeal, so I like it in that sense. Let's go do another Kazooie level. I've been sort of staring at these. Um, Gobi's Valley. Do I like Bubble Goop more than Gobi? That's a hard ask, because Gobi's Valley is not amazing. Obviously it has Gobi. Shout out to the Gobi. All my, all my friends love Gobi. But I don't know. I, I think it's a little more memorable than Bubble Goop and Cloud Cuckoo Land. Maybe. I don't actually know if it is more memorable. I remember trying to go through the maze, the the matching minigame. These days it's not that bad, it's just the, the zombie makes it a little rough, but when I l eventually learned that you can use Wonder Wing to destroy the zombie while you're doing the matching minigame makes it super trivial. But there's also some cool like speedrun skips here. It's going into C. C for sand. Onwards. <laughs> we have Pterodactyl Land. Mmm. Mmm mmm mmm. Okay, we're gonna put it in a D. It's above Bubble Goop, below Cloud Cuckoo Land. I think Pterodactyl Land, it's interesting, but I think that it suffers from the sort of navigational difficulties of Click Clock Wood without having enough fun vibes to match with it. The T-Rex is awesome as a transformation. The stomping grounds is still a mystery. What the hell do those stompers, <laughs> what are they attached to? It's like the, the Stephen King's The Mist. It's frustrating at the same time. I, I, I never enjoyed going around trying to get all of the jiggies. <sighs> yeah, we're, we're gonna put, leave it there for now. Freeze Easy Peak. So, Freeze Easy Peak is fun, it's memorable, great music, interesting stuff. I always found it kind of sad. I'm gonna put in beef right now. A is looking very empty right now, I am noticing that. Uh, so some of these might get moved around, we'll see. Onwards, okay. I've been avoiding putting stuff in A, M maybe not. But I haven't done it, but we have one I'm going to. It's Treasure Trove Cove. I quite like Treasure Trove Cove. I will go back to it to play it. It's fun. There's really not that much going to it, to be fair, compared to some of these others. But there's only a little bit of swimming. Uh, there's a bit of flying. Uh, I, I think visually it's really interesting. Uh, Snacker the shark is difficult and rough and scary. But when I learned that, uh, spoilers, you can 
kill it with eggs, it becomes way easier. It, it doesn't kill them permanently, it kills them for a time. Uh, I like the platforming. I just have fond memories of it. Uh, it also is home to the minigame in which you... I'm just realizing both Mayhem Temple and Treasure Trove Cove have the places where you input cheat codes. Next up, Hail Fire Peaks. This one is difficult. But honestly, I, I think it might be an A tier because I think it's really iconic. It's such a cool idea, combining the ice and the fire, having them be looked over by dual dragons of the equivalent element, I think is a very cool idea. You get to see the aliens again from Jolly Roger's Lagoon, which is neat. Uh, it's difficult, it could be frustrating, but I think it was just fun. And also, because I like glitches, I like speedrun stuff, uh, it also has some really interesting speedrun tech. It has some cool, stupid, funny glitches. If you watch my glitch video, you'll know, like, the skew glitch, for example, is really easy in this level. I think it's an A tier. Again, all these could move. We'll have to do a readjustment at the end. Uh, let's finish this off. We have Mad Monster Mansion. So, Mad Monster Mansion is... Another iconic level. I think it's better than Freeze Easy. Don't know if I'd say it's better than Witchy. I might be actually. I think I might want to put it here in B. I think it's a really, really interesting level. It's neat. It's really cool. It's spooky. And uh, some of the Jiggies are a little silly. I always hated <laughs> getting the Jiggy when you have to go down the chimney into the main room and then get across to get the Jiggy without waking the ghost. I don't think it's as iconic as Clear Clock would, but that's where I'm putting it for now. And we're going to finish off Glitter Gulch Mine. I've never super loved this one. I, I would say it's probably better than some of these, but I don't know. I'm going to put it here for now. Glitter Gulch Mine, I think I enjoy it a little more than Jolly Roger's Lagoon. I like the drill ability. I think it adds a lot to the game. Now hubs, I'll add these in post because I don't have the images on hand, but uh, we have Gruntilda's Lair and then we have the Isle of Havocs. Gruntilda's Lair, I think if it would be added to these, which is not the most fair comparison, it would probably be somewhere in C tier. I don't think it's awful. I don't think it's that great. I think by comparison, Isle of Hags is much better, landing it somewhere in B tier or maybe even U tier, because I think that Isle of Hags, it's way more expansive. It's much larger. It, it gives us more of a sense of scope because it's like showing us the world rather than just this weird witch's weirdly shaped layer. All the various level entrances are more interesting, I think. But yeah, those are my thoughts on the hubs. Let's go through and readjust as needed. I'm going to go from bottom up to see. So Rusty Bucket Bay, is it the worst out of the worst? Yeah. Grungy Industries, I'll keep it there. Pterodactyland, I feel like I'm being rude to it. I might put it here just because I think it might be more fun to play through than Cloud Cuckoo Land. Gobi's Valley, yeah, it's fair. Clanker's Cavern, Jolly Roger, Glitter Gulch Mine. I think those placements are reasonable. Freeze Easy Peak, Witchy World, Mountain Monster Mansion, Click Clock Wood, Mumbles Mountain. I would still rather play Mumbles Mountain than Click Clock Wood. I think Click Clock, I'd rather play Mad Monster. I'd rather play Witchy. I do think it still is higher than Freeze Easy Peak. Yeah, put it there. Hailfire Beaks, Treasure of Cove, Mayhem Temple. Yeah, I think that's fair. I, I would. Well, Hellfire Beaks can be quite difficult. I'd go back to it more often than a lot of these. Uh, Treasure Cove is just a fun time Mayhem Temple. I think it nails, it feels quintessential Banjo-Kazooie despite being a Banjo-Tooie level. More interesting than Mumba's Mountain. It's other sort of starter world comparison. And I think that's where I'm going to leave my rankings. Was this a worthwhile video? Probably not. But that's where I'm gonna end things thank you for watching big thanks to my channel members for the support and a world size thanks to captain crayfish for being a super fan and supporting the channel if you enjoyed the video check out some of my other banjo kazooie stuff because i have a bunch of banjo kazooie and banjo tooie videos let me know if you want to see more ranking videos on the banjo series or something else or not at all let me know something just comment anything <laughs> that's it for this one goodbye